Hello again. So this time out, we're going to design a slightly larger yard, like I promised in the last video. Now, I had a couple of choices on what to design, and my first choice was this one. And this is from the track Planning for Realistic Operation by John Armstrong. And it looked kind of interesting. It's for a coach yard. And uh, I started playing around with it, but as I got into it, I realized that, well, the templates that John Armstrong used and what's available in any rail, they don't really line up. And my biggest problem was over here with these Y tracks. So I decided, well, let's not use this one. Let's, uh, let's find something else. So I came up with this one. Now this one is a little bit easier, but it has a lot of really interesting elements in it. It has a passenger platform up here. It's got a runaround track for the switching, and it's also got a switch lead, a caboose storage, and an engine terminal. Now you can't take this design to the bank. I mean, there's no way that, you know, it's actually going to work out the way that uh, it's drawn here. But what I'm going to show you here is uh, what I came up with. So let me uh, let me pull up that drawing. So here's what I came up with working with uh, Walther's Code 83 track in AnyRail. And I think it came out pretty good. Um, and as you can see down below, it compares uh, nicely with uh, the uh, original John Armstrong drawing. Now I did a couple of things in this drawing that I just decided on my very own. That's how I, how I was going to do it. And the first one is the size of this layout and I made it 20 feet long by 8 feet wide. Now that's pretty big, but if you design something like this, you can always shrink it down. So, you know, and make it fit your space. And again, this is just an example of what you can do. And I used the code 83 number six switches throughout because I thought that would be uh, pretty nice for the yard. Now, this turntable and this roundhouse over here that took quite a bit of time to uh, design. And I'm working from drawings from the user objects library, but still it took me a while to lay that out. So I might actually just do a short video after this one about how I laid it out, not really show you in this video. And we'll just sort of copy it from here and drop it into uh, the drawing that I'm going to uh, construct for you. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I have some of these coordinate points written down. So that when we start uh, designing this and showing you how I did this, uh, I can sort of cheat and get everything back close to what this drawing looks like. So let's get started on it. Okay, so here's the blank space we'll be working with. And as you can see, like I said, it's 20 feet long and 8 feet wide. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a piece of flex. So let me grab a piece of flex and I'm going to do something that you may not agree with, but it's the way I like to work. So I'm just going to make this one long piece of flex, but I'm not going to go the full 20 feet. I'm going to come in 12 inches on either side. So let's zoom in here. And I'm going to set the end point here. And I'm going to set that to an X of 12 and a Y of 24. And I'm moving the end point only. And then over here, I'm going to set that to an X of 228, because that is 240 inches minus 12. So let me do that. 228. Let me hit Enter. And if I zoom out, it should be right. Let's see. It looks like it is. OK. And the reason I just use one long piece of flex like this is I just find it easier to go in and cut wherever I need to insert a switch or something like that. So the first thing we'll do is we will put in that local passenger and passing siding, and that's going to go up here. So we're going to cut in a switch down here at this end. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And we're going to put in a number six right hand. So let's go grab that guy, drag him over here. Now, if we look at the drawing, it's going to cut in somewhere around here. So let me see what looks good. That looks pretty good right there. So we're going to cut the flex right here. And I'm going to mention again, I wish you had an option when you cut the flex to either cut it with or without the connection. But anyway, 
let's delete that. We're going to grab this piece of track and we're going to pull it back and we'll connect our switch. And we'll connect that back. I'm going to check here, make sure we're still on a Y of 24 and we are because occasionally when I've been working on this, it will shift maybe a 16th of an inch up or down. And I don't know why. It could be that when I cut it, I've grabbed the track accidentally and just sort of nudged it one way, but occasionally it moves. So I like to check my points every once in a while to make sure that they are still looking okay. Now we're going to need to put in that passing siding. And I will admit, I really don't know much about what the spacing should be for a passenger siding, especially one that has a platform in between. The best I can find looking at all my books is that the spacing center to center is somewhere between three and a half to maybe five and a half inches. So I think we're going to compromise here and we're going to put this at four and a half inches because the passenger platform drawing that I found in any rail fits perfectly within four and a half inches. So let's go over here and I'm just going to cut this and remove that. And I'm going to say add parallel flex. And as you can see, it's already set for four and a half inches above. So I'm going to do that. Now we need to cut this somewhere up here so that we can curve it into the switch. So I'm going to pull back here and I'm going to cut it maybe right about there. Let's see what happens. I'm going to pull that down. Let's say smooth flex. And we've got a curve of 40 and 7 16 And I think that looks okay. I don't think there's an S curve in there. There might be a small one. Let's move this. So I'm going to select that point. I'm going to say move connection. And I'm currently at 183. So let's just take it back to 180 and see what happens. We'll hit smooth flex again. That looks pretty good right there. Let's keep that. Now that's taking up a lot of space. But as I move this connection closer to this, we start to get that S curve. And I don't do passenger service on my railroad. So somebody out there who, you know, loves passenger trains and has designed or worked, you know, on another model railroad that does passenger, um, you might want to tell me what I'm doing wrong here. Okay, so now I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to say, let's make this siding five feet long. So one, two, three, four five. So I'm going to pull this piece of track back like that. And that's close enough, close enough for government work. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select those two. I'm going to copy them. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pull this piece of track back. Oh, I want to show you something here, something very interesting. I'm going to connect that back up. Now, when I cut this and I took out the connection point, this is something uh, I found about any rail and uh, maybe it's just me, but uh, it's something that you might find interesting. Now, say I wanted to pull this side back that way. Well, if I come over here, and try and grab that. I can't do it. No matter what I do, see, no matter what I do, I can't pull that track on the right hand side back. So let me delete this again. Now I can come here and I can pull that one back. But once I disconnect it, I can't find a way to pull this one back. So what I found I had to do is if I need to pull this back, I just come up here and I say, cut it, select that, I delete it, and then I can pull it back. I think that's a funny thing in any rail, that you can only pull back the track on the left-hand side, and I may have mentioned that in another video, I'm not sure. Anyway, so let's pull this guy back. Let's paste in what we copied, and we're going to flip it. And I don't see flip up here, so let me do this. There we go. 
Now I'm going to come up here. I'm going to connect it. Now I'm going to pull this track over. And I'm going to look at my connection point and make sure my Y is still correct. And it is at 24 inches. And I'm going to pull this one over, connect it. Let's go see what we got. There's our passenger and also our passing siding. So now I'm going to work on the other end of the yard. Now I'll keep quiet and kind of speed it up, but we're going to do the same thing that we did over here. We're going to find a place to put that switch and we're going to cut that switch in. So let me do that. Okay, we put that switch in and it's on the right Y dimension. Now we're going to start putting in that through freight west siding. And that goes right here. Now, we want to have these tracks on a two and a half inch center. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just copy that down. Add parallel flex. 2.5 inches below. There we go. Now I'm going to pull it back. This is just like what we did in the last video, video 24. We need a left hand number six here to connect up to this guy. Right. And we know from the other video, in order to get two and a half inch spacing, we have to put in a 3.75 inch piece of track right here. So let's go grab a piece of flex. In the last video I mentioned, I could just come up here and go straight flex, make it three and three quarters. But I kind of like to just come up, cut it, delete that, grab it, pull it down, and then do straight flex. And we'll put in 3.75. And the reason I do it this way is, that, that way I have this piece of track up here that I can just cut from. And I don't have to keep uh, going over here and grabbing one. And if it becomes too short, well, I just come up here and make it long again. Okay, so let's put our switch in. Let's pull this guy over and hopefully he will line up. <clears throat> now, for some reason, it says we have a radius of 7,375 inches. So let's go look at this. And it says we're on 26 and a half. What do we say over here? 26 and a half. I'm not going to worry about that. Now we need to add another track down here for that through freight east track. So again, we're going to go two and a half inches. And there we go. And then we're just going to cut it here somewhere so we have a nice curve into it. So let's figure out where we're going to cut that. Okay, that's pretty good. 52 inch curve right there. I think we could live with that. All right, now we're going to zoom out. We're going to come over here. Now we get to put in all the switches on the right hand side. So the first switch we're going to put in is the one coming off of the main line that will bring us down to that through freight west. So let me put that in. Okay, so now we have that switch in. Now we need to add another number six that will lead us into that uh, through freight west and also down to the through freight east. And then go the other way to our right to the switching lead and the runaround. So I'm going to pull this track over. Kind of like that. We'll come up here and now I'm going to add in my switch. Actually, I'm going to pull this a little bit farther and I'm going to go to center line. And now I'm going to add my switch. And now what I'll do is I'll look at this Y here and that Y is 26 and a half. And I'm going to set this Y on my switch to 26.5. And you can see why immediately I did that. So now I'm going to slide it this way. 
and I'm going to have to overlap here because they don't line up. So, you know, this is another instance where you have to cut the switch to make it work. So let's do that right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one a color. And then I'm going to slide this guy over. So let me do that and we'll get that one lined up. Okay, that looks fairly good. Let's see what we've got here. I'm going to pull this guy back. I don't have to use shift in this instance. And I'm going to connect him up. And let's see, we're still at 26 and a half. We've got an 18,879 inch radius curve. So this is a straight piece of track. So that looks pretty good. So let's kill off this section. We don't need that to be a section anymore. All right. So our yard's starting to look pretty darn good here. Now, I connected this here. I probably shouldn't have, but I wanted to see how straight this piece of track came out. So I'm going to have to move this over because now we have to put in another number six left hand right here. So this will be a pretty easy operation. So let's go do that. Okay, now we need to add in the switch to get us into this track. Okay, and again, we're looking pretty good here. This is a 760 and 1 8 inch radius, and this should come out as... 29 inches, so it, it's right on. Now we have those two storage tracks down below. So that's going to be fairly easy. We need to add in another filler piece and another number six. So let's uh, just do this. Do that. Control C, Control V. Drag this guy up. We'll go grab this piece of flex. We're going to attach him here. And we've got that done. Now we need to add the track that comes back this way and we're still working on two and a half inch centers so we are going to add a parallel flex two and a half below and i'm going to stretch this out because we think we're going to need it we just might as well do this one okay so we're going to need to cut in another switch and we're going to do the same thing we did up here it's going to have to overlap and that switch is going to go right here so we're going to go back to center line like that I'm going to grab my switch again, and we'll do the same thing. I'll set its Y, and then I'll slide it until it looks right here. So let me go do that. Okay, I think that looks okay there. Let's kill off the section. And let's drag this piece of track back. Oops, wrong piece of track. So let's drag this piece of track back here, back. And I think it belongs right here. There we go. Let's connect it up. And 9,969 inch radius. Again, essentially a straight piece of track. So now our yard is starting to look really nice. Let's go back to track. And how far back should we bring this? I don't know. Let's bring it back to right about there. Give you some room to work with. All right. So now we're going to come up here and we need to add in a number six left hand here. Let's see if I can do that. Nope, I'm going to have to spin it. There we go. And then we're going to put in the caboose track as well. And that's going to be a number six right. So let's go grab that guy. And there we go. Now we're going to put in this runaround track. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to drop this down. 
We're going to go back to center line. I'm going to put a switch in, a left hand switch on the same Y, and I'm just going to slide it up until it looks like it connects. Okay, so now we have our runaround track in place. And now let's lose the section. Okay. We can put in our caboose track here if we want. So let's just cut that. We'll disconnect that. Put that there. I'm sorry, that's actually the uh, switching lead. So let's uh, pull that back about there. That looks good. And then let's do the same here. Oops. Let's get rid of that. Disconnect it. There's our caboose track. That looks like a good length on that guy. And there we go. There's that yard design. Now, we need to put in the turntable and the roundhouse, because that shows on our original drawing. And in order to design that, it took me a little bit of time. So I'm not going to design it on this video. I will show you on another video exactly what I did on that. It seemed to work. If you have a better idea, as usual, I ask you to uh, let me know what it is. But stand by and let me go grab that roundhouse and that turntable. All right, so there it is. Let me see if I can get that positioned somewhat like I had in the original drawing. I'll zoom in here. Okay, that looks pretty close to where I had it. So what I did then is I just took a piece of track and I let it just curve down into the turntable. I didn't use two tracks like it shows on the drawing because it just didn't seem like it was going to work out and would take a lot of time on the video. But that looks pretty good there. 70 inch radius going into the turntable. Let me uh, zoom in here. Let me select that guy. I'm going to bring him to the front just like that. There we go. There is our yard. Now I put some passenger platforms in here and I got those from user objects CH. I don't know who CH is, but their platforms seem to fit. Let's go up there and take a look. And what I did is I just dragged them like that. I copied, pasted, put another one in and just sort of aligned them like that. And I made this passenger siding in this drawing a little shorter than I did on the other one. I had actually had three of these in here, but that's no big deal. You get the idea. So there it is. That's the design of a slightly more complicated yard. And I'm taking that out of a book, but you get a good idea of how it all goes together. Places where you have to slide switches together, like here, or places where you have to use a filler piece like we used in the uh, last video. So I think that pretty much brings it all together. So I think we'll do a short video on how I laid out these tracks for the turntable. And we'll just make that another video. So once again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, if I didn't explain something clearly, please let me know. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.